The date is April 5th, 2022, and we are in the heart of the Mississippi Delta in the city of Greenville. With the day off from work and no scheduled college classes, I set off on a day that would be dedicated to short line action. The first of two short lines of the day would be the Columbus and Greenville Railway, a short line owned by Genesee and Wyoming. Two trains would be operating out of Greenville this morning, the road job to Greenwood and the Greenville switching job. The switching job would have the last remaining locomotive in the original paint of the CAGY, while the road job would have a pair of newer Jeep models in the widespread G&W corporate colors. I think it's obvious which one I made the drive for. Right off Main Street, we find the number 8720, sitting idle awaiting to perform today's switching duties. Let's dive into the history of the 8720. Built 59 years ago in 1963, 8720 was branded as Illinois Central 9423. After 16 years of operating, the IC would send it to the Paducah shops for rebuild in 1979. It would roll out of the shops as a GP11 with the number it still wears today and that iconic cab that is a staple of Illinois Central's legacy. Today, 8720 wears a sharp green, silver, and yellow paint scheme. This is known as the anniversary scheme for when the CAGY hit 25 years of service. Even with such an elaborate paint scheme, years of service are slowly revealing the classic black Death Star paint underneath its current paint. Around 8 a.m., it's time for the day to begin. Today's conductor, Eugene, prepares the 8720 for its day's work. There isn't too much on the agenda today. The three tanks you see behind the locomotive will be shoved back into the CAGY yard just down the road. The tanks will be dropped from the yard, and three gondolas will be coupled to and taken to the port of Greenville. With the conductor aboard the rear tank, the engineer eases into reverse to drop these cars in the yard. Since the yard isn't really that accessible, I had some time to kill before 8720 would roll back through town. I'd use some of it to check out downtown Greenville and the casino on the riverfront. Just a few blocks down from where they keep the locomotive, the old Yazoo Valley in Mississippi and later Illinois Central Depot still stands by the tracks. At one time, the Columbus and Greenville used the station as an office, but has since moved just down the block. The city refurbished the building in 2017. The 8720 is heard a few blocks away, so I set my camera up and prepared for my chase to the port.
leapfrog to the South Theobald Street crossing to get our train slowly easing over the switch. That's another pro about spending time on short lines. There is little to no stress at all when chasing them. This railroad has enough history to justify an entire college course to it. We're just going to go over the very basics. The original Columbus and Greenville was formed in the early 20th century. It was a subsidiary of the Southern Railway and was under the name Southern Railway in Mississippi until the name was changed to Columbus and Greenville Railway. In the 1920s, the short line would gain independence from the Southern. For another 50 years, it would grow and serve much of the state of Mississippi until 1972 when the Illinois Central Gulf acquired the railroad. The ICG would only keep this track for a short period of time before the second and current Columbus and Greenville was formed in the mid-1970s. The line was spanned all across North Mississippi from Greenville to Columbus. But now the line is split into two sections. A washout in 2001 left 89 and a half miles of rail unusable and nothing has been done with the track since. Genesee, Wyoming bought the CJGY in 2008, and still nothing has been done with the tracks. For a much more detailed look into the history, check out HawkinsRails.net and AmericanRails.com. Here we see the 8720 approaching the port from the harbor front road. As you can see, the Columbus and Greenville rose by several industries around the port. Semi-trucks were constantly coming in and out of the area. It's nice to see such a busy industrial area in an otherwise worn down city of Greenville.
Well, I hope you enjoyed this video of the CHEY's Greenville Switch Job. I would have liked to stay and film at Switch and return back to downtown, but I actually had to get moving on to catch my next short line objective across the river in Arkansas. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you somewhere out there trackside.